Cambridge type gauge is a simple tool that allows you to perform several different types of measurements of welds. With this one tool, for example, you can measure undercuts or pits, fillet weld leg length, fillet weld throat dimension, weld reinforcement, outside misalignment, and angle of preparation. To measure undercut or pits, place the tip into area of undercut and lower the legs of the gauge to the surface of the plate. The amount of undercut is read from this scale. To measure fillet weld leg length, place the tip at the toe of the weld. Again, lower the legs of the gauge to the surface of the plate and read the actual leg length from this scale. This measurement should read 3 eighths of an inch for this weld. Now let's measure the actual fillet weld throat dimension using the miter slide on the Cambridge type gauge. First extend the slide as far out as it will go. Place the tip of the slide on the face of the weld and lower the gauge until it squarely contacts the surface of both plates. The actual throat dimension is then read from this scale. Now let's try measuring the weld reinforcement. Again, using the tip, place it at the highest point on the weld and lower the legs of the gauge to the surface of the plate. The weld reinforcement dimension is then read from this scale. To easily measure outside misalignment in a similar manner, rest the legs of the gauge squarely on one surface of the pipe and lower the tip until it contacts the other pipe. Again, this scale is used to read the amount of misalignment. Finally, let's measure the angle of preparation of this pipe spool piece. Place the legs of the gauge squarely on the surface of the pipe and lower the rotating segment until it rests squarely on the bevel. This bevel angle measures approximately 37 and one half degrees according to the scale. One of the quickest and easiest ways to check fillet weld size against weld specifications is with a fillet weld gauge. These gauges come in a set with sizes ranging from one eighth of an inch to one inch in size. Just select the size that's called for in your drawing. In this case, the size selected is a three eighths of an inch gauge. This part of the gauge will measure the height of the fillet weld leg. Here is another type of weld gauge called the AWS gauge, which performs some of the same functions as the Cambridge type gauge. With this gauge, you can measure actual fillet weld leg length, size of concave fillet weld, permissible convexity, and reinforcement. To measure the actual fillet weld leg length, place the side of the gauge squarely against the side of the plate. Lower the gauge until the leg contacts the toe of the weld. Now lower the slide until it contacts the other plate surface. The actual leg length is read from this scale. To measure the size of a concave fillet weld, place the gauge so that the 45 degree bevel rests squarely against the adjoining plate surfaces. Now carefully lower the slide until it contacts the face of the weld. Read the effective weld size from this scale. Again, place the 45 degree bevel of the gauge against the adjoining plate surfaces to measure the permissible fillet weld convexity. Lower the slide to the weld throat and read the maximum convexity from this scale. Finally, let's measure the reinforcement of a butt weld. Place one leg of the gauge on each plate and lower the slide until it contacts the weld reinforcement. Measure the permissible weld reinforcement from this scale. This scale is designed to measure weld reinforcements ranging from a minimum of one thirty-second of an inch to a maximum of one-eighth of an inch.
The high-low welding gauge is another multi-purpose gauge. As with all of the gauges shown in this program, both standard and metric units of measurement are available for dimensional verification. With the high-low gauge, you can measure internal misalignment after fit-up, material thickness after fit-up, verify 37 and one-half degree bevel angle, fit-up gap after fit-up, and butt weld reinforcement. Let's start with an internal misalignment. First, loosen the locking screw and insert the gauge tip into the fit-up gap. Now rotate the gauge 90 degrees and slide the gauge body until it makes contact with the outside diameter of the pipe. This assures that the gauge is square and that the reading displayed is correct. Next, pull down the gauge until the internal alignment stops are snug against the inside of the pipes. Read the misalignment on the scale. You can use the same procedure to measure pipe wall thickness after fit up. To obtain this measurement, use the material thickness indicator and this scale. To measure fit-up gaps less than one sixteenth of an inch, insert the alignment stops into the fit-up gap. If the thinner portion of the gauge will not fit, then the gap is less than one sixteenth of an inch. If it partially fits the gap, then the gap measures somewhere between one sixteenth of an inch and three thirty seconds of an inch. If the stops go through the gap, the gap is larger than 3 30 seconds of an inch. This procedure can also be used to verify a 37 and 1 half degree bevel angle. Before you insert the gauge this time, be sure to set the alignment scales to the zero position. Now place the gauge body squarely against the pipe wall. Push the gauge as far as it will go into the fit-up gap. If the beveled shoulders on the gauge fit snugly against the bevel on the pipe end, you have the correct 37 and one-half degree bevel common to most pipe end preps. We can use another procedure to measure fillet weld leg length and butt weld reinforcement. Place the gauge over the fillet weld and read the actual fillet weld leg length on this scale. This same procedure can be used to measure butt weld reinforcement.